It looks like it's setting it up. So we're going to drop off the line. I see it. 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 Yeah. All kinds of echoing going on. Like all kinds of echoing. Okay. Susan, you can probably fall off the phone line. Um, well, I don't want to. I don't want to call you off the line because I'm. There it is. Okay, you're live, Susan. Okay, I'm live. So, um, hello, everybody. Sorry about that. Here we go. So um, I'm here today, Susan Kuznitsky. Thanks to Blick for bringing me in to do a pastel demonstration for you all. And then we'll be able to uh, answer questions in the chat. So just type away whenever you have a question. I'm broadcasting here from today's sunny Portland, Oregon, believe it or not, I'm out in my studio. And I'm gonna flip over to my um, camera and just jump right in. Um, I'm working today on Lux archival sanded paper that Blick carries. And it's kind of a newish paper and it's just wonderful. It's a sanded surface. This is an eight by 10 piece that I have taped down all the way around. And this is a lovely spring, a kind of late spring image with all these beautiful purple wildflowers with the pretty sun in the background. And what I've done here is I have just made some tick marks on the sides here as well as on my image here. And I started with the pastel pencil, just lightly sketching in, and not a colored pencil, it's a pastel pencil, very important. Um, and I'm just sketching in big shapes. I kind of did this while I was waiting, so I couldn't wait. I was getting anxious and excited. So I'm going to do um, a Gansol on top of pastel underpainting. So first I just have to kind of just figure out my big shapes. I'm gonna be working with a combination of hard and soft pastels. I have multiple brands that I like that I use. And um, what I do now, now that I've just did this big broad sketch is I'm picking up local color. I'm gonna start back in the background here, this far away um, band of trees. I'm ignoring the yellow on top of it, just sort of peeling it back. And I do this underpainting a little darker and stronger than I want to end up because with pastels, they work from dark to light, layering colors. And that's the beauty of this medium. So I'm just getting a very soft background there for that far away band of trees. I'm gonna look at the shape I see up in the top, a little bit of sky that's showing. And just when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm thinking like I'm making a jigsaw puzzle for a two-year-old. So you know that would be big clunky shapes, not every little piece. Can't possibly have a two-year-old doing every little piece. And I'm gonna get some really bold color back here for that far away meadow, that hilly meadow. Sort of gonna ignore, except for the big fence posts and the big trees. And ignore the little fence posts and put them in there. So I'm just again looking at a big shape here, right about there. And I'm leaving a space here just for these two little or two large um, fence posts. And I'm gonna put those in really dark with a dark brown. I suggest when I teach, I suggest to my students to do this part with hard pastels because they're just easier to control the amount of pigment that comes off. It's just a lot easier. So I'm using a dark brown this is a Rembrandt actually, it's like a medium. It's not too hard, not too soft. So I'm just looking to see where these two big trees are that are framing the image and the bigger fence posts. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick up a nice kind of light purplish color for where the sun is hitting the purple flowers. Dappled light, which is another one of my favorite things to paint. So my goal here is to cover this with a layer of pastel and I'm gonna, and then put the medium on top, which we'll see in a minute. So there we got those big purple flowers and these are kind of a bluish purple. I'm gonna pick up a combination of purple and blues 
and I'm making it very strong and bold, much more than I know I'm gonna end up with. I'm looking for big shapes of these flowers. I'm not looking for individual little flowers. So I see mostly this big shape when I squint at my photo. And next I'm gonna start putting in some of the foliage that's a little too dark. Let's go a little lighter, there we go. So again, I'm just trying to cover my paper with a layer of pastel. So here's the darker foliage over here. I'm gonna kind of carry it right on up here. There is some really dark shadows next to this tree. Again, looking for big shapes, not little pieces, bigger pieces. And there's this pretty green sticking out over here. And I think I'll just fill it up in here. So this part goes pretty quick. And it's um, a great way to kind of just kind of figure out, break down your image into smaller shapes, the bigger shapes where you can see the smaller shapes inside. I mean. And now I'm going to pick up a color for the shadow part of this pathway. It's kind of an ochre brownish color in the shadow. So I'm looking at the shadow. Again, I'm not going to paint every little dappled light right now. I'm going to just look for the big shape. So this whole area of the front part of the path. And then I'm going to pick up a really nice pink, warm tone. It looks real abstracty at this point, but it will come together, I assure you. So once I feel like I have my paper covered, which I do, I think I have enough on here right now. Get a little bit more purpley stuff over here. A little bit of a bluish purple. So I just don't want any big um, pieces of the paper showing through. We get a good amount of pastel all over. All right, so that's step, step one. Okay, so step one was just getting some color on here. Now the next step, I'm taking just a little container. I have a little container of Gamsol and I'm using some Blick, what are these? These are Blick Scholastic Golden Tacklin. They're synthetic brushes um, really for students. You don't need to use any kind of fancy expensive brush on the sanded paper because it will chew it up. But these work just fine and I'm dipping it in my Gamsol I'm not drowning this pastel, I'm just kind of moistening it. It's turning into a paint. So I can move it around the paper a little bit. And I'm going color by color, kind of start with the lighter colors, just so the gamsol doesn't get real tainted. So you can see how just a little bit of medium liquid will turn this, because that's what pastel is. It's pigment in a stick, in a binder. So it turns it right back into a that. Another other options, I do this also with, I can do a whole watercolor underpainting on this paper. It takes water beautifully, acrylic, even oil. And the reason for doing an underpainting, besides that it's really fun, is it just gives you a really good base of color to layer on. It saves you from filling up the paper too quickly because this is filling up none of the paper. So on the sanded paper, you can get four, five, six layers of color. Um, and this kind of gives me a free pass, more or less. Now I'm gonna go into some of the darker colors. I'm doing it all with one brush. I'm just wiping the brush in between colors. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep going up on the sides here. It gets darker and it dries a little lighter. And it also dries super quick, like probably that sky is probably already dry. Another reason you don't need to drench the paper too much with the Gamsol. Just moisten it. So here we get the other tree over here. And it really ends up looking very abstract. You might even be scratching your head going, what is she doing? But it looks, you know, it gets to be like almost like a graphic design, abstract kind of thing. 
So we're going to work from these big shapes into little shapes. And I picked this image because it just felt so springy, almost summery, like end of spring, beginning of summer. And it has some really good contrast with the darks and the, and the trees and the uh, fence and then the beautiful spring green behind it. And I can even take a little bit that I have on here and even put in some of these posts because I know I'm going to want them in there. And I can also draw them in with my pastel pencils, which I will. And there's going to be just picking up a little bit on the brush, just kind of indicating where I want those. All right. If anybody has questions, just type them in. Hopefully I will get them and I can answer them while I'm painting. All right, that looks dry enough. Um, I'm gonna come back in, putting a little bit of a lighter, warmer blue up here. It is dry, it dries really fast. And even getting a little bit lighter color on top of that, it's a little too pale. The other wonderful thing about this technique on this paper is if I do screw it up, I can brush it off and build it up again. So now I have a soft pastel in my hand, a light blue on top of that, all those other colors that I put in there. And I'm just sort of carving out a little bit more of that big shape of the sky. There's gonna be a lovely kind of peek through here with these tree, this tree where it splits. I'm gonna put that in. So I think I got that well enough. And I can lightly use my finger if I want to do some blending. Okay, and then I want to also address, get a little bit lighter colors. So again, I put darker colors than I knew I wanted to end up with. I did it intentionally. Because I love to layer the colors right on top. And if I get, if I start too light, then I can't really do the layering. And there's different ways of applying the pastels as I work. You'll see me turn my hand. I do some sometimes this kind of staccato, almost like tapping. I kind of jokingly call it like a Morse code kind of stroke. Here you saw me do a flat, broad stroke on the side of the pastel. As you work in this medium, you kind of learn different ways to apply it in different strokes, mark making what works for you. So there's lightening that up. Lightening this up will also push it into the background. And then as I'm working, I can see that um, I want to put in I'm getting some brighter greens here. So when I want to go on top, so as I said earlier, light goes on top of dark. So if I want to, I'm going to, this is kind of jumping ahead, but I'll be putting some of these leaves that are coming down over and I'm making it a little cooler. I don't want to get quite that yellow. I'm mixing up a spring green color with the yellow. And I'm going to address that back field here just lightly. I want to get some pastel on here so that I can then blur this edge. I want this to be a really soft edge. A couple ways of softening edges again with my finger, or I can just take a pastel pencil. I'm going to pick up a light pinkish pencil and I can soften edges and alter color slightly with my pastel pencils. But you need first to get some soft pastel, hard and soft pastel layers in order to do that. So I'm building up color on top of color. I'm going to pick, sneak a little pink into that for the purposes of making it recede. This is a very strong color. I don't want it to come forward. And pink would be a red, which would be an opposite color to the green. So if you sneak a little pink of the same value into your greens, it's a great way to tamp them down a little bit and push them into the background. All right, we're moving forward and now I'm gonna get a really good rich dark. This is a um, very dark brown, almost gonna look black. Cause I wanna see how that will read next to my meadow. 
You can see how dark that's going to get. All right, let's see. Are you painting with watercolor first or something wet and pastel? I missed the beginning. All right, what I did was I laid pastel all over this in different big areas of color, according to what I see here. And then I took Gamsol and I brushed it over to turn it into a paint. But you could also do a watercolor underpainting. I do a lot of that. I do acrylic underpaintings. I do watercolor underpaintings. This was just the fastest for doing a live demo. So I picked, that's why I picked it. But I love doing all different kinds of underpaintings. Here again, I can blend with the pencil. And then what I want to get in here too is a little bit of that, um, this is going to be a cast shadow coming off that fence post. This way. And I can see here, I'm going to get this fence post in. And then if I want to start getting in, once I know I have this back meadow, I'm going to work a little bit in here a little bit, just break up that big green a little bit more with some lighter greens and yellows and pinks before I put in the fence posts, the sideways ones because it's easier to get them all in before I have to paint around each little square of fence post. Again, I'm gonna sneak a little bit of pink in here, just give it some life and some variety. All right, then I'm gonna come in with a hard, this is a Rembrandt pastel. I love these ones because they're hard and soft, kind of in the middle. And I'm just using it on the edge. You could also use pastel pencil for this. So I'm going to see one kind of just ping where I want to get these fence posts. One, two, three, four. Try to get as many as I see there. Not real critical, but that's going to come down here. And I can fix these up with my pastel pencils too. I just kind of want to get an indicate where they are. And this one's coming down this way. And then there's a bunch of dark, really dark ones that are going back towards this tree over here. All right, and now I'm gonna indicate a little bit of um, some of that lovely purple. This is going to be done like kind of a lot of staccato strokes, a lot of like kind of impressionistic broken color. It will be like too blended. So I'm going to turn my pastels all different directions for this. I'm pulling out some more colors from my big set. This is a little bit of kind of almost like busy work, but fun busy work because you just have to get enough strokes in there to start to get the feeling of all these lovely um, wildflowers in here. One thing I want to do is I want to kind of fix up this shape over here because it's cut a little blobby. It happens, that happens with the underpainting. So I can come in. Have to wait for that to dry and it is dry so I can shape this a little more over there and I can also come back over how it's growing I love to look for the rhythm and the pattern of how things are growing okay let me do this over here I want to kind of indicate this tree there's a some really cool lovely um reflected lights coming into that tree which I will address in a bit Another thing I use with my pastels a lot is charcoal. What I have in my hand is just regular old vine charcoal. It's really compatible to use with your pastels and it's a great thing to have in your kind of pastel toolbox. This tree a little stronger. I like how it splits there. All right, starting to, you know, take a little bit of shape here. Um, I think the next thing I want to indicate is this beautiful um, 
strong light that's hitting across the front of this pathway here or the back of it. Um, yeah, there's some more grass growing a little lower down here. So no problem, put it right in. And I so I don't put my lightest color in first. You saw me put a pink in there. And now I'm gonna come on there with a lighter pale peachy color. So that's the thing you have to really remember when you're working in this medium is um, you want to layer your colors. You don't wanna go for your lightest color right out of the gate. Doesn't give you any room to grow, so to speak. Uh, what is your preferred pastel pencil? I have never used pastel pencils. Well, I have a bunch of different brands that I've acquired over the years. Oh, I should tell you guys all, I have to warn you that pastels are highly addictive. You will never have enough. You will always want more. I sometimes jokingly tell my students I feel like a drug pusher. Um, but that being said, I have many brands that I've tried. And I the first brand I ever bought was a uh, Carb Othello. And I seem to really gravitate to those. They're all they're all good. Creta Color is a really good brand. I think that's listed on my featured artist page. That is one I tried later. I had, when I first started pastels way back in the 1970s, so I'm dating myself. Um, there wasn't that much on the market. I'm actually from Chicago where Blick originated, so kind of interesting, little full circle there, coming back and doing this for them. I used to shop there when I went to the American Academy of Art in downtown Chicago. Uh, there was very few brands to choose from, and now there are so many, and I think Blick carries quite a few of them. But you really can't go wrong with the pastel pencils. They're, they're, I think they're all, the, the reason I have mixed brands also is um, Conti Pastel. Conti Pastel Pencils is another brand. I don't have a full set, but there's some colors and every brand kind of has their kind of special colors that you won't find in the other brands. So I found a few that I really like in certain brands and I buy those individually. But if you're gonna buy a set, I would get Creta Color set or a Carbothello set. And you'll see, um, as I get some more pastel on here, um, I'll show you how, how I use them. Well, I'll just show you a little bit right here. So when you're looking at like kind of a little bit of a reflected light on the side of this post, I don't wanna get a heavy amount of color on there, but I wanna warm it up. So I'm picking up this um, peachy color pencil. I call it glazing. It's just a very light stroke. This is more like the finishing part, but I'll, I'll just show you because it's really interesting to watch and it'll just slightly change the color. It's like glazing. It would be like equivalent to glazing and acrylics or um, oils. So you can use the pencils for that. Of course, I use them for drawing and redrawing things. You know, like I'm gonna definitely have to come in and you know tone this up. It's, you know, it's a fence post. It's gotta be straight, can't be all goofy. Um, not in my painting anyway, maybe in someone else's painting, but I want it to be realistic looking. So I'm gonna come in and clean it up and I'll use my pencils for that. So the pencils have different, um, they're great for softening edges. They're great for doing that glazing thing and they're great for drawing. So they have multiple um, purposes. All right, Gina, maybe before the end, the artist can verbally summarize how the underpainting was done and then what kind of paper. Lux archival paper. Pastel with Gamsol mineral spirits on top was the underpainting. And I think this is going to be recorded as well and it'll be up on YouTube. So if you missed a lot um, and I don't get to go back and address everything, you can always access um, the video. It's been the wonder of teaching on Zoom during COVID is having videos of everything. All right, I wanna come, I wanna start coming down into here. It's a little bit strong, but I can layer colors. Remember, the whole trick to this medium is the beautiful layering of colors. So I got a much darker color than I knew I wanted to end up with. And I did that purposely. I want to get this mixture of this kind of umber and ochre pathway here. 
So I'm, again, I'm going slowly. I don't, I really love the thin layers of colors on top of colors. To, so I kind of sneak up on my light. So I'm, again, I'm, now I'm doing a different kind of stroke. I'm kind of just skating. You can probably hear the sandpaper. I'm just sort of gently moving my hand sideways to kind of create that feeling of that pathway. And then I can come in on top of that and start to get some of that dappled light that I think is so beautiful, which kind of drew me into this image. And you can start to put that right on top again, because we're working dark to light. So light colors go on top of the dark colors very easily. If you screw it up and you want to get, if you got too light, then the solution for that is to take a crappy old brush. This used to be a filbert and now it looks like a pointy brush, but this would, this is what I would use if I needed to brush something off, just scrub it down. Oh, and I want to mention down below, you can't see it on here, but what I have down below, this is pretty important if you're new to pastels, or even if you're not, um, does create some dust dribbling down. And so I use two inch wide masking tape. You pull off a piece, I already have it on here, but I'll just show you, it's down below, I don't want to move my camera, but it's down below and I, this is below, so it's down here, but you want to put it out and leave it sticking halfway out. And any dust that comes off your paper will just land right on the tape. It's very easy to clean up. It doesn't get in your lungs, it doesn't get on your floor. All right, now we have to keep moving forward into the foreground here and start to break up these blobby shapes that I created with the underpainting. I have a very dark green in my hand. It's a soft pastel. And there's some dark brown mixture in there too. I wanna make this tree look like it's really in, surrounded by all this foliage. Now the rest of the painting is gonna be kind of breaking up these big, Massive shapes that I put in initially with pattern and color, try and replicate the feeling of this beautiful springy day. So over here, this is gonna to start to come. So here again, I'm doing more of the dot, little dots and I turn my arm to go the way I see the foliage growing, foliage growing. So you have all different ways of applying the pastel on this paper. I said it'll take several layers. Once I get rid of all those hard edges that were created from the underpainting, it'll start to soften and start to come to life. Susan, do you do any blending once you get? Yes, I will do some blending. You'll see that I have to get a little bit more um, pigment on here, a little bit more color, and then I'll show you how I would handle that. So I want to break up some more breaking up of these big shapes down here. And I want to start to get in some of these outrageously beautiful purples. That purple green thing just takes a little bit of tapping, moving your arm, holding up the colors, looking at shapes. I'm always looking at the shapes, always trying to redefine big shapes. Looking for the flow of the shapes too. Kind of pattern I see, you gotta look for pattern. It's there, you just have to look for it. Okay, looking at the time. I guess we're gonna go a little longer since we started late. All right, and then another, so pencils, back to pencils. Um, when I get a little farther along, I'll start to come in and I, this is a great way to use your pencils because I see some of these lovely graceful branches coming down, which I totally ignored in the beginning because they were too little to deal with, but I can design how I want these to flow and come into the painting. And then they have 
teeny tiny little leaves coming for the beginning of spring. So I can just do this tapping thing again. The softer pastel will start to be able to build up some texture. So that's always fun too. You need soft pastels for that. It won't work with the hard pastels. So I kind of save those for the end, sort of kind of equivalent to like doing thicker paint. So you can think of it like thin to thick, being that the pencils are super thin, the hard pastels are a little less thin and the soft pastels are thicker because there's more pigment in the stick. Right, so keep going and then I'll get to using my pencils again. Um, let me just, I actually, I think I could show you right here. So I wanna lighten this a little bit, but not extreme lighten. So I can, well, this is the glazing thing that I was doing up on the fence post, if you were here to see that. So this does two things. It's softening the edges between the lights and the darks. And it's softly, gently lightening some of the color. I don't wanna get too light. I don't want to compete with my, um, you know, the shadow. I want to keep it shadow light. I don't want to compete. I want to get some of this cast shadow in here. So I can do that with the pencil. I can do that with this hard pastel. Kind of wiggly because it's going across the ground here. Again, and I will come in and clean this up, so to speak. This fence posts. So if I, you know, if I get one in the wrong place, that's a great, great place to just come in and just brush it away. And I have to come back in with the green. So there's a lot of room for messing up. It's really a very forgiving medium, very forgiving medium. Um, it's a great medium for beginners to learn color. I love pastels. Probably can tell. I really, really love them. I want to get some of this fence in there. These are coming down here. Again, charcoal mixes with pastel just beautifully. Sometimes I don't want to get black in here, but I want to get dark. And sometimes the charcoal is just the right amount of dark without it being a really harsh black. Looking for questions. I have to kind of look over and see if there's anything in the chat that we're doing good here. All right, and then I can come back in now with some super light if I want to get a little stronger. And this is where I'll like kind of press and twist the pastel on here if I really want to get some texture going. It's really where that light is really blaring, glaring on that part down here. And it gets back to this part, I can see that I'm gonna get some more texture with the purples and the greens. I wanna get some shape going down in the foreground. Sort of these cool greens that are in the shadow. And there's sort of, I can see a lot of sideways um, leaves growing sideways. Turning here to look for some more colors. My big set next to me, my big set, I mean, things blended together, all different brands, hard, soft. And then I have in front of me what I call my working palette. So I pulled off a lot of colors before I started. And that's another thing I suggest. This is my little test swatch, where I was picking out colors I wanted for different areas. So now I'm doing what almost looks like calligraphy, you know, just going sideways. There's just so much fun different ways you can move your arm and move your pastel stick. Even I you work in little pieces, you've probably seen. I don't use big sticks. I take my sticks and I break them down into halves or even thirds. I keep the original pieces in their original box. So if I need to replace a color, I know what it is. And then I put them all together in a bigger bigger um, palette, so to speak, over to the left of me because I'm left-handed.
Right, so now it's starting to take some shape. Pencils, again, um, over here is some beautiful um, bouncing light on this big tree. So that's where I could come in with my pencil and just get a very slight hint of it. Um, that was a kind of peach color. This is a, even green because I see it's reflecting up a lot of light from what's around it. Really pretty. I think it shows up on the image. And we can see it's starting to take some shape. And some of these are gonna come right over on the path and start to break up that, that line there. And I'm gonna get my darkest darks right in the front here. My deepest, darkest darks are gonna be right in the front. And that, that's what is gonna to start to give me some perspective, aerial perspective on here meaning some distance. I'm going to get rid of this little squiggle so I can go over it with a softer, lighter pastel. It's a little difficult to do a straight line. I'm sitting off to the side of my picture a little bit so that my back of my head doesn't get into the video. And sometimes when I do a straight edge, really straight line, it's a little difficult, but nothing I can't manage. Right, so we're going to keep building up some color down here. I'm going to turn my arm up and down when I do the flowers because that's the way they look to me. And there's some little lights hitting them. So yes, yeah, so you want to kind of, if you were painting, you would do the same thing with your brush stroke. So you can do the same thing with your arm and your pastel that you would you know, kind of do with a brush. Turn it, move the stick sideways, move it up and down, flat. Can you do the same with brushes and pan pastels? You know, I am not that familiar with pan pastels, but I think, yes, that would be my guess. I just don't use them that much. So I can't really say, but I think it'd be good for underpainting. All right, so here I'm gonna kind of dot in some of the dappled light back in here. I wanna break this shape up a little bit because it's still the original blob from the underpainting. Break up some of this. So it's beginning to feel like a field of flowers. It takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time. And I love this little dappled. So this is a great area to you know stick in little peek throughs of color of light coming through the greenery over there. I also want to come up way over here and get some of this coming in from the side. And I think I want to get some light coming on that side of the background too. So this kind of comes here. Oh, I want to get some of these kind of warm spring colors coming in. Here we go. Coming in over here, coming in here. So if I want to get a thin amount of color, I will just kind of swipe my really lightly. I don't want to get a heavy amount of color so you can lighten up your touch. Pressure has a real lot to do with it, the amount of pressure that you apply. Some people are like super light handed to begin with. If not, it's something you got to kind of develop. Because I would save the more heavy handed stuff like for down in here. If I want to get some dabs of light and this is a soft pastel. So when I twist it and press it, it gives you a little bit of texture, like it's a little thick, like a palette knife would if you had a lot of paint on your brush. So I save that, that's sort of towards the end. So that's where you can kind of build up extra texture by 
saving up those really super soft pastels for the finishing touches. Okay, so back to a pencil. If I want to kind of just lightly work out this, um, I think I need to get this fence post a little more grounded. So we're going to get a really dark color under at the bottom of it. Let's see how much darker that is. And then that cast shadow comes rolling out from there. And then there's little bits of the cast shadow pick, picking through down here on the ground. Same over here, I wanna get some dark just at the bottom of this fence post, and a little bit up in the middle here. And I love this big tree on the left side. It just, it's just dreamy looking. It's just bouncing up with light from all over. And it's got these kind of knots. So I think, you know, if you just watch the whole thing, you can see how it's transforming from the big old blobs into the littler shapes, into the final, into the details. And that's the process, so. Is she working on sandpaper? Yes, Elisa, I am. I'm working on Lux Archival Sanded Paper. Another paper I really like is um, UART Sanded Paper. And both of them that I work on are 400 grit, if you're interested in that part, because it's kind of in the medium rough. The Lux Archival, as far as I know, only comes in the 400 grit, where the, the UART comes in various grits, depending on, you know, if you like, um, it comes like, I think 240 or 260 is the roughest. So the lower the number, the rougher, the more grit is in it. And then it goes all the way up to an 800 grit, which would be too smooth for me. So 400 is kind of right in the middle. So I want to make this tree stand out more, but I don't want to get it any lighter. So I'm going to get a little bit darker around it. So it'll pop out a little more. So I'm going to teach in my classes um, a lot about color theory, color harmony, color relativity. And there again, if I don't want to smush it with my pen with my finger, I can take my pencil and just sort of soften the whole area. Again, back to the using the pencils for glazing. Use them for drawing, use them for glazing back and forth. They switch roles constantly throughout the painting. And I, when I do portrait work, I do figurative and portrait work as well. I would I use more pencil than when I do a subject like this. Right, so I'm just going to kind of clean up this little edge here. I want to soften it. It kind of goes in and out. And you can build up some more green, different cool greens, warm greens. They're kind of bouncing all over. They're going different directions. So the more I could make my little strokes follow the pattern of the green, it'll start to create that feeling. They become almost like feathers to me. And then the foreground here, we can really get a little bit stronger kind of silhouette of, a, of the flowers. These little they're kind of upside down little bells, I believe, in real life. Kind of grow wild. Can you hear me tap, tap, tapping? What brand pastels? Elizabeth asked. Um, I kind of have a big variety. I, I was saying earlier that, well, I don't think I've met a pastel I don't like. But my, my go-to brands, 
if I had to narrow it down, my go-to brands are, um, I use the new pastels or the Krita colors for the hard pastels. I like the Rembrandts. They were kind of my original brand when there was nothing else to, to get <laughs> way back. And the soft pastels, um, sommelier are awesome. Terry Ludwig, awesome. I want to get a little more warm color in this. It seems to have some glowy warm colors in there. Um, and there's some kind of cool, it looks like all kinds of stuff on this pathway to kind of make a pattern. And de designing my dappled lights so they're not boring and they're not repetitive. I just taught a class and I do PowerPoint presentations in my class as well on different, whatever we're, the demo is going to be. And we just did, last week was dappled light and I had this great PowerPoint on how to handle dappled light showing different examples of different art artists, past and present, and how they address dappled light. Because I think we're all really attracted to it. It's tricky. It's not just throwing in dots of light. They have to kind of go along with the way the earth is. They have to feel right. They can't just be randomly thrown in to look, to look good. So there's start of some of that dappled light that's picking up in there. All right, I'm just gonna keep kind of moving along here, getting this a little more filled in. I love how it's growing kind of up and down over here. It gives me that pattern back in here. And then some of these are sneaking up onto the tree. And I see a little bit of light coming on the back side of that tree to peeking through, kind of follow this pattern back over here a little bit. And then there's some more this fence posts kind of peeking from behind these flowers down back here. And then if I feel like that's a little too hard edged, that's a great place to come in with a pencil and just soften it. Pencils are wonderful for that. And I'm gonna still have to spend a little time cleaning up this fence post because they're a little wonky. Again, I'm using a dark brown pastel and then the charcoal to even get it a little soft, dark but soft. I want to get some of the greenery growing a little farther out over the fence here, break up that area a little bit. So I'm doing back to that little kind of dot, dot, dot application. So I think we're going to I'm going to work about 10 more minutes. So if you have any more questions, please type them in and I will answer them. I know we were supposed to start at the top of the hour and we had a little technical problem. So I'm going to go a little longer for you guys. I guess we're so dependent these days on our internet more than ever with all the social media, Facebook Live, all this live stuff, Zoom classes. 
So again, here is that beautiful bouncy light on this tree. I really like that. So this is where a great place to use my pencil. So it just gets a thin amount of color on there. Just a really thin amount. And if I really want to start to finish this up, this is another little thing I do at the end, towards the end of a painting, because I have all this messy stuff on my tape from my big um, underpainting strokes. So if I take black masking tape, this is sort of like the equivalent of putting a mat around it, more or less, as it sort of quiets down everything around it. So when I'm getting towards the end of a painting, this helps a lot to really see how to finish it up. You see how that kind of cleans it up and pops it out even more. This in the way, so I'm gonna move this a little bit. Soon enough, I think. So there you go. That's how I start to judge it. I would be standing back, but I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm working this to try and get more done. So then that helps me frame it out really nice and clean and see what needs, you know, what areas need to be worked on some more. So and then down in the front there, I still want to get even some more darks. I'm looking for this really dark, very dark purple, almost black looking. So I can get more detail and darker shapes in the front that will help the background look farther away. It starts to break that up nicely. Tricky color, this blue purple thing. It's a really tricky color. It's so pretty. All right, let's see. There's a couple more questions. Is there vine charcoal a preference over a black pencil? Yes. Vine charcoal would be a little softer to deal with than a black pencil. Um, Gamsol is it uses a solvent. Love the video. Thank you, Malika. Um, Gamsol is what I have, but you could use you know mineral spirits. You can use denatured alcohol. You can use rubbing alcohol. I had a student in the class once, and she got so excited, and she didn't have any of these things. She wanted to try it right away, and she went into her liquor cabinet and pulled out a bottle of vodka, and the vodka worked for the solvent. Do you use something below your art to catch the pastel dust? Yes, you missed that part. Double wide masking tape, leave it sticking out halfway, a couple inches below your painting, and it'll catch all the dust. Good questions. Again, you guys can review this. It's going to be up on YouTube. I don't know when, but probably pretty quick, I would assume. Um, and then you can review this again. And you could also see more information in other demos on my Blick Featured Artist page. And that will also have more information on me and my classes and other work, my other work. And you can always get in touch with me that way as well. And this has just been really fun once we got through the nerve wracking tech issue. This has been really very fun. So there's this see pretty light coming on this um, side of this tree that gives it that little glow. And, I thought, and it's just enough, the pencil is just strong enough to get it there without it overtaking, as I can still see the other colors coming through. And the charcoal I can use just like the pencil if I want to soften an area down without, I mean, you certainly can use your fingers, but I call it like glazing versus smushing. So it still allows the colors to peek through. There's a time and place for smooshing. Um, I think I want to get some of these beautiful spring greens coming off of this tree. I didn't really address this too much. And some of them come right over that tree. So it needs to get more filled in. And, um, I'll probably finish this at some point and post it on my web my website. takes a little bit of, 
I'm a very impatient person. I mean, this is the fastest medium I know of, and it's still not fast enough for me. I just want it to be done. I just, I just want to go, go, go. Do you spray fixative? Oh, I was waiting for someone to ask about fixative. Never at the end. Do not spray your pastels at the end. It will darken the colors. There's some brands that, that don't do it as much, but there, it doesn't fix it like you think it would fix it. It still needs to eventually be under glass, like a watercolor or a photograph or a print. Um, so it's not, it doesn't make it invulnerable to getting smudged. I do, however, use fixative sometimes in the intermediate stages of a painting. Like if I built this up too much, if I just kept going and I thought, you know what, it's just really not, it's not what I want. Then I have two choices. Well, if I don't like it, I can brush it all off. I said earlier, just get a crappy old brush, even a toothbrush, and you can brush it off and it all goes down on that tape that I said to leave hanging out. Um, if I do like it, but I want it to get brighter or want to get more going on it, then I, I would call it spot spray. I would lay it down outside. It's the stuff I use is the Krylon, it's stinky. And I put paper all around except for the area that I want to spray. And that's something I do do when I'm, you know, working on a bigger piece or even on a little piece, doesn't matter. But that is a really viable way to use the fixative. And I'd also, if I were working, not doing a demo, I'd be taking breaks and standing up and standing back because there's probably things, you know, there's more that needs to be done. But it is a demo painting and it's making a point. And I think the point is being made. So big, last big thing here, I would, if I want to take an area, like I don't want to lose all this, but I want to kind of, what I would say, mellow it out. I'm going to look for kind of a bluish purple pencil. This is the Carbox Allo. And I'm going to do that glazing thing. I don't want to lose all that work, but I, it's, I don't want it to be too distracting. I want to softly blend it all together. So I'm barely, barely touching the paper here. I'm just skating over it. And it just is enough to pull it together without killing it and losing it. So I'll do that a couple times probably before I, and then I can still come in on top of that if I want to pop out. That's not popping. Let me get a popping color here. Some of the highlights. That's when, that's when I can like kind of tone it down and then pop out some highlights on top of it. There we go, they're popping now. So that's how I, first I mellowed it out and then I'm gonna stick, you know, really stick in some highlights. And again, I'm pressing and twisting the pastel. There's some lovely highlights dappled by coming across there. So anybody else, that's about it. I think I'm, I think I'm done. I'm not done done, but I'm done. I'm done for this demo. So here again, just, there I go, I'm not done. Turn your arm, get some pattern going. I'm not going to paint every flower, but you want to get the general feeling of them. So a little bit of finger work is okay. I'm just not a big smusher person. So the dappled light up here would be nice. I think I need a little bit more. Maybe coming down, draining out the top a little bit. Too dark, too dark. Get a lighter color. Where's my lighter color? This would be better. There we go. All right, I think I'm gonna sign off. I think I'm going to bring my face back. And thank you all for joining me. And I hope you look me up. Look up, there's three demos on my featured artist page that you can look at. One's a kitten, a cat, one's a landscape, and one is a portrait. Okay, thank you all very much.